Hi, it's Friday and uh, this is the uh, weekly wrap up of what we've been doing in Congress and some of the things that I've been working on. I'm sure that everyone knows that all week and probably the last couple of weeks, the news has been all about Russia and how uh, Donald Trump Jr. had interacted with uh, Russians in regard to the last election. I don't think that's going away. As a matter of fact, every day there seems to be more information. It's coming out sort of drip, drip, drip. What this shows is that it is extremely important that former FBI Director uh, Robert Mueller, uh, who has been appointed to look into this, get all the information that's out there and, to, and he's able to do a, a proper analysis and go over all the information and make sure that our electoral process is not uh, interrupted, it's not compromised, and it's not hacked by the Russians or anyone else. This is as much about American democracy and the protection of our electoral process as it is anything else. He needs to be able to do his job, he needs to get all the information, and he needs to make his report to Congress. The other national issue that is consuming a lot of news is the Senate's new plan to take health care away from millions of Americans. They are calling it the repeal and replace of the Affordable Care Act. The fact of the matter is they repeal parts of it, they don't replace it with anything, and all of the initial analysis suggests that it's going to be harmful to many millions of people in regard to them losing their health care. Also, there's a provision that allows what they're calling skinny health care coverage, which means policies that you would buy that wouldn't cover the problems you have when you're sick or injured. And the experts say that if that happens, what it will do is will force the sicker people into the regular health care, healthy people into these skinny policies, and it would undermine the overall premise of, uh, of health care coverage for Americans and cause everybody else's premiums to go sky high through the roof. So stay tuned. They don't have the votes to pass it right now. Uh, there's a couple of Republican U.S. Senators who have said absolutely they will not support it, and then a handful of other Republican Senators who are on the fence. They can't lose any more votes or they won't have enough to pass. Even if they were able to convince the fence sitters to vote for it, they would still have to bring the vice president in to cast the tie-breaking vote. So stay tuned. It's not going away anytime soon. Now, I've been working on other things as well this week. Yesterday, I led a fight on the floor and in the Rules Committee to disclose information about a terrible, terrible project, this classified project, that our country undertook in the 60s and 70s. Our Department of Defense exposed many veterans and some civilians to some very serious chemical and biological agents. Many of these people are ill today. Some have already passed away. And we still don't have the information that we need for these veterans and their family members. I led this charge when I first came to Congress and I was able to get the Department of Defense, after 40 years of lying about this project, to admit that they did in fact expose our veterans and some civilians to some of the most dangerous and lethal chemical and biological uh, weapons known to humankind, sarin gas, VX nerve gas, and E. coli. However, they've really been dragging their feet after my successful legislation in the early 2000s. They've been dragging their feet and getting this information out. So I led a charge to try and amend the defense bill to declassify this program so once and for all these veterans would have access to the information they need. Sadly, that effort failed, but we're not giving up. We're going to keep hammering away and make sure that we get full disclosure on this very ugly part of our history. I also had two pieces of legislation that I've been working on for the last uh, few years get passed out of the Ways and Means Committee th uh, this week. 
Uh, both of these bills are important in regard to uh, health care for people in our district and for people across the country. Uh, one would allow uh, telehealth, uh, an issue that I've been working on since my days in the state Senate, to be even further expanded to include home health visits for dialysis patients. So dialysis patients who choose to get their uh, dialysis work done in home uh, would be able to use telehealth to communicate with uh, the medical professionals uh, in their place of work. is a great step forward and a lot of folks are, are counting on this. And the other one uh, will make it easier for individuals to get prosthetics and orthotics. Uh, and at the same time, make sure that we keep a close eye uh, out for uh, Medicare and Medicaid fraud. So these are two good pieces of legislation. I'm really pleased uh, that they passed the Ways and Means Committee. Uh, they're going to pass the House in the next couple of weeks. And I want to thank everybody who's worked so hard uh, to make sure that we had success in, in this area. Thanks very much, and I'll see you next Friday.